Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Uh, it is day 76 in the 100 day challenge, uh, 100 day project. Anyway, um, today is just going to be a roundup of ideas of ways to decorate signature pages. And uh, I think I've got at least 10 different uh, samples here and basically just show and tell. It seems like I've spent the whole day getting ready for this, but um, the challenge of course is picking, not picking, but whichever signature pages you pick to decorate, obviously then some thought needs to go into what is appropriate to go with it. Um, I guess the, the part of the thing that uh, makes it, I don't know, easier or harder? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure. This is just sort of mass making. This is scrap busting. This is getting another step closer to having something ready to use. So there really isn't an end in mind, which maybe is a freeing concept. But on the other hand, a person just has to just blindly go go ahead and create some stuff and hope that, you know, it's going to fit in a journal project sooner or later. If a person was working on a specific journal, then it would be easy to say, okay, I need stuff that's pink or I need stuff that's grungy or I need things that, that are country. Um, anyway, enough about that. Let us begin. So I've tried to demonstrate the different uh, materials as well as kind of group them together here and show them on different types of paper. So this is just, uh, you know, uh, pages out of uh, a kid's, you know, those little school scribblers. And in this case, and it was dyed with um, ink way back when and has been waiting to be used. So in this case, I decorated the edge of the page with part of a wallpaper border. Now, it was a thrifted roll. It had had some chunks missing out of it. There was a little bit of damage. So I thought, well, you know, I could have just thrown it out, but... That's not the way of a junk journaler. So I cut part of it off. Uh, well, maybe you can't even tell where that happened. Okay, let me show you. Sort of something like this. <clears throat> so that's what I kind of mean by scrap busting too. That all those things that are kind of maybe not in optimum condition can still be used. And basically, I... Well, I guess I don't need to tell you every little thing. I wanted more of the border to be uh, supported, I guess, by having less of it sticking out beyond the fold, beyond the edge. So I changed the fold here by about half an inch. I also trimmed something off here that would have made it vulnerable to catching and tearing. So wallpaper border. This is just a plain old strip, well, a plain old strip uh, wallpaper cut off. And I kind of thought, well, it goes well enough with this map page. And in this case, I just made it a shallow little tuck. In this case, it's also part of a wallpaper uh, design that I had cut off. Now it matches these brown birds. I folded it in half so it serves the purpose of strengthening the page or the edge of the page as well as if I would have used it, you know, full width, which would have been, you know, over half an inch, I would have been cutting off part of the diagram and certainly some of the words. So I didn't really want that. And it was longer than the height of this page. So I just used the remainder of it on the back side of this rather than, you know, hang on to another teeny weeny scrap. 
Okay, so the next category, so that's wallpaper. Uh, the next category is, see, well, trim. The bigger category is trim, and in this case, it's um, a sequin trim. Now, what I did here was basically just have just a very tiny smidge of it extending beyond the page. It helped me uh, keep a straight line, as well as it's it's not going to really catch on anything. Now, of course, with this, it's important that I could probably touch that up a bit. It's important that the ends are glued down well because the fraying would be, let's just say, catastrophic. It could all come apart and you'd end up with nothing. So this is on a very tiny, uh, fine, I mean, pink uh, stripe. I also used it on a plain piece of blue. Um, and this is just typing, you know, um, uh, copy paper weight. Oops, I have a little something there. I, um, at one time, this is, oh, early on in my junk journal life, I bid on a lot of paper from the government surplus. And um, so I've got mega, mega, mega sheets of colored paper. So uh, I need to start using more of it. I, I have dyed a bunch of it, but anyway, that's why I'm using this blue paper. Plus, of course, it picks up the blue in the sequence. Now, this is not technically a page. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a page. It's a scrapbooking paper scrap. And initially, I folded it over thinking, oh, it could be just a narrow page in a signature. But then I thought, well, that doesn't really let me use this border, this sequiny border around it. So then I ended up cutting it open and shortening it all, making it more like a pocket uh, size. So then basically what I did was I sand, okay, this trim, so I have a spare piece here. Mm, I thought I had a scrap of it left, oh yeah. So this is basically these, be these sequins and a bead or two, um, sewn onto the edge of some seam binding. So I sandwiched that seam binding in between these two layers. So I do have a bit of glue here that needs to be rubbed off. Anyway, this, um, of course, is another, you know, you could imagine it as, a, as the edge of a page, and, and that's another way to, to uh, use those kinds of things. This is just a string piece of, um, what do you call them, sequins. So I just glued that on the edge. I kind of really like this paper for whatever reason. I think you'll, you'll see it show up again later on. Um, it was just some gift wrap, but I, I don't know, somehow it appeals to me. This is a master board that I did, obviously, on a page out of an atlas. So it is is oh they're all napkins that's right it's napkins that i collaged onto a piece of paper and fairly neutral you know other than this sort of light uh, what would you call that green can't think of it now sage green i thought that this uh braided gold vine would be kind of you know nice contrast with the predominantly black and white and again i just had it extend a wee bit beyond the edge of the page so that you know in a finished journal it would show but it wouldn't cause any uh too many problems now, I am bound and determined to very soon begin working or begin finishing <laughs> uh, some boho journals. So I had a lot of these really beautiful colors that I had embossed. So I also have a fair bit of this bling. So I thought, okay, why not use bling? So we're still in the, we're still in the second um, um, category section 
uh, called with the overarching name trim. So I thought, well, okay, let's just uh, make a little pocket out of this. And this is the width that was, and it's it's kind of cute. This is, well, do I? I mean, you've seen this. You, I'm sure you own it. These sheets, these sort of acetate sheets that have these rows of these gems, these diamonds on them. So all I did was cut a couple of rows off the sheet. Don't tell me I put something away. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. And I thought, okay, this is um, a pretty generic and versatile little piece of paper out of a, a lined notebook. Let's just add that to the top of that. So I just basically trimmed the acetate all around so it wouldn't be visible. And uh, used Fabri-Tac on that. This teeny weeny little thing is one of those sort of pocket signatures. Dictionary page on one side, gift wrap on the other. And I just basically covered each edge with some sheer uh, fabric that likes to fray. And that looks uh, oh sorry this is the start of the third one fabric so there you have that and we mustn't forget to decorate our little teeny weeny pages too now this one is okay i thrifted uh, a wrap around skirt so it has uh, this piece was part of the well the waistband, which is also the way to close the skirt. So I trimmed it off um, and basically I just glued it down so that part of, part of it shows on this side. And um, I didn't bother trying to make, uh, I think initially I thought of a tuck spot, but then of course forgot when I was doing the actual gluing. So this is just a decorative thing at the top of a page. Um, again, with a little bit. So imagine if this was in a journal, you would see this above the, the top of the page. This was a master board that I had done with a digital tape measures and some of the back diagrams from uh, sewing patterns. And this, I think, came out of a, a pattern book. Anyway, so same thing. I used the other piece of, of the, the tie, self-tie, um, to create a similar look on the side of the page. Now this, of course, is nothing new. We've all seen it. We've all done it. A fabric uh, tab. I chose to put this on top just for something different. This fabric likes to fray, so I thought gluing it down is a good way to contain it. And this I salvaged from a bookmark gone wrong. I don't know if you saw that early on, but I was using, <clears throat> for the first time, I was using ribbon crimps to make bookmarks. And the fabrics, I think I had three of them, that I fabric and ribbon that I chose for this particular one, um, it didn't work, so I had to think of something else for it. And this is just on uh, coffee dye paper. Now this is <laughs> very busy. It is a page out of Ideals Magazine. So you know that, that they tend to have a lot of um, illustrations and uh, photographs and so on. So this is actually, oh, I did, I did two ruffles. These ruffles came off um, a kerchief. And you can see they really like to fray and so on. So I used one uh, at the top, one at the bottom. And of course, when this become, when this is in a, an actual journal, they'll be, these two pages will be far enough apart that it won't seem odd. It'll seem cool. Now the next category I have is scrap paper, scrapbooking paper scraps. Now this one, this one may be misfiled in the sense that it was not 
technically scrap paper. It was... Um, it was, you know, it came off something like this, where you get kind of this perforated thing in a kit. So I just chose that one because I thought the purple kind of snazzed it up a bit. So again, um, you know, what we add can be really narrow. And again, don't want to put a scrap back in the box. So I just use both pieces. This is kind of more of the same. This is some old book page, really nice. Uh, quite often it is a wee bit um, vulnerable. So I here I used, it, this is just kind of a paper, geez, I got glue all over me. Um, a paper trim that would have been included in one of those, you know, cheaper paper kits. And then this was, uh, you know how when you buy a pad of paper, there's the branding strip, and sometimes it's really decorative, and sometimes it's partly decorative, and sometimes it's just utilitarian and not decorative at all. So I thought these look pretty. This is a so this is the good side of a branding strip. So I just combined the two, and um, you know a lot of times the margins of white space on book pages is quite big. So I really didn't have anything to lose by covering that the way I did. Now this is, you know, kind of in your face. <laughs> um, this also was some sort of, I guess, scrapbooking paper. I just don't know if it was eight, eight and a half by 11. It might have been, I think I have several sheets. Again, a thrifted thing. And then I thought, well, I had a scrap of this cardstock. Why don't I use it to make um, this pocket? But I also let it extend beyond the edge of the page, just so there's also a bit showing, you know, again, beyond the edge of the page. Um... Okay, so next, which is number five, um, ribbon. Now these pages are out of the art link letter encyclopedia or whatever his series of books was called. So pages are too wide for a typical journal. So I've got, you know, a pocket at the bottom and these folded in things. So this was just, um, this is called crepe paper ribbon. So again, polka dots kind of mean fun. Uh, it's red, it's sort of tied in with some of the colors that were on this little strip here. And I thought, good way to use it up. Now you will have, if you watched the, um, the ribbon video, you will have seen these this before. Um, oh, I'm not sure why this one is here. Misfiled. This is also ribbon. Now, this I this sort of paper, which is like um, you know an eight and a half by eleven scrapbooking paper, I think would end up in you know could easily kind of be in a grunge journal. So this is a little bit of a kind of a rattier looking um, sheer ribbon. I left the top that was kind of you know, fraying here and made a pocket. <clears throat> now, of course, when push comes to shove and the, it's time to complete this, I don't think that this will be left as it is. But certainly if a person wanted to collage a bit or stamp something or glue something down, that is still totally possible. This, okay, these two pages... Uh, were napkin attached to music, well, to book page, text and music. So basically what I did in each of these is use uh, the paper twist ribbon that I had, and I just folded it over the edge of each side. Um, it gives the page a little stability because, of course, book page can be weak, napkin can be weak, this uh, gives it a little more heft. 
on this one okay so this is the full width of the of the uh this sunflower ribbon so on these i left it again as kind of a shallow tuck spot um you will have seen this also in the ribbon video and it was basically this um, sort of well, i guess you could almost call it a die cut design over a white uh, also die cut design so just um, showing you that there as well now this one is a bit of um, again more, more embossing a more embossed paper this is a scrapbooking scrapbook paper strip and then I just um, you know added a little more oomph to it by putting down this trim so that sort of straddles two categories. Um, okay, now the next section, which is, again, these aren't the catchiest names in the world, is um, what I'm calling book page borders or margin designs. So again, more embossed paper. I have a kid's book that has these really wide, beautiful colorful decorative borders and so far I've just been hanging on to them not doing anything with them so I turned one small piece of it into this pocket and the reason it's folded this way is because you know it could be sewn in here and then that extended or decorated in some other way now this I believe is parchment paper that I coffee dyed. So it's, you know, it's see-through, it's a little bit ratty. I must not have had a very sharp knife or whatever I was using there, it doesn't matter. I have strips of these, I think I have four of them. So they obviously came out of some sort of a book. It was, um, you know, along the side of a page. Architects, artists, designers, draftsmen, and engineers. So I just used it to create a pocket, a tuck spot. Um, and again, it will, I left the top part as it is, sticking out a bit. So it, it kind of serves as a tab. And it also serves to strengthen at least one side of this very, um, you know, fragile paper. Now, you know, when, when its final destination is known, maybe something will have to be added to this side as well, just to keep it, to make it a bit stronger. Um, oh, I, I should also say, similar to this, I have um, also used, like, strips of photos, like from a grad, uh, grad photos from a, a yearbook. So that's another way to, some things just lend themselves to that because they're, I mean, it's laid out perfectly. You don't need to collage. You don't need to do anything. You just cut and paste. Um, okay, what, where am I calling? What am I calling this one? I guess, yeah, we're probably still in the same category. Now, this was a day, I think a date book. Or maybe a card holder and it had some Edith Holden drawings but of course every page was the same so I cut them the pages down to a width that is more usable and I had all these surplus uh, strips and of course it's got this nice decorative these little square holes uh, this is very newsprinty type paper from the 30s so it too is not the greatest so basically what I did was glue it down, just lining up the edge of the holes with the edge of the paper, which meant that there's that little, again, that little lip that goes past. This was a fold, so I glued it here to make a little pocket. So there's a little, I should, let me show you. There's, there's this little pocket here. And then, of course, the entire thing is also a pocket. So, um, yeah, I have many more of those strips, so we'll have to continue doing that. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm calling that, I'm still calling that a book page border. Okay, here's that paper again. This number seven <clears throat> is basically what I'm calling calendar uh, and other miscellaneous paper scraps. So this was part of a, I cut down some images because you know, calendars can be very big. So I'd use some pieces, but then I also had all these strips with, you know, part part of a design on it. Oh yeah, here's some more. You know, so kind of muted. You know, these kinds of things. Uh, the other thing a person could do, of course, is use the actual word. November on the side of a page. So basically, I picked part of a strip whose green matched that green, and that's why I used that there. And I just glued it down. Um, again, you know, I'm not saying that any of these pages are complete as they are, because there's always the possibility of adding more later. But that's that one. Um, Oh, the other thing I wanted to say, where is it, where is it, where is it? So that one too is misfiled, I guess. Another thing I'm putting in this category are packaging scraps. So this, yesterday, uh, I bought a, um, a pair of satin pillowcases. Because, you know, they, they, they don't make creases in your face overnight and add to your wrinkles. And it keeps your hair nice. Um, so I'm just, I'm being kind of a smart ass here. I truly believe that. And I, I do have satin pillowcases. It was just time for a new pair. So, yeah, it's supposed to, to allow your face to, you know, it, it lies smoother than, say, a, a cotton would. And it doesn't promote wrinkles. It's also supposed to keep your hair kind of a little smoother and maybe less frizzy. Anyway, this was the very part of the very beautiful packaging that those pillowcases came in. So um, I thought, well, let's make a little pocket here. So that is that. Um, what I intend, but again, I spent so long getting some of this stuff together and ready to tape that I didn't, um, that I thought, oh, let me just start taping already. Um, what I intended to do um, was create a side strip, strip on the side of a page just using postage stamps. And again, you know, a person could do that with postage stamps or labels or fussy cuts or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you need to get rid of. Um, yeah, this is probably a good enough place for um, the paper doily. So this was just a form of some, uh, some where I was thrifting once. There was a pad of this paper. Don't know where, where it's from or what it's for, but it's green and it's got that. So great. And I had, um, I coffee dyed some paper doilies. But again, um, you know how weak they are. You know how easily they tear. You know how hard it is to to sort of keep these things uh, intact without them tearing further. So I just glued down the side that was sort of, you know, part of the center. And... Uh, trimmed the excess off here just to have less, you know, ratty stuff hanging around. Um, this is a scrapbooking paper, eight and a half by 11. And here I used one of those strips that coordinated in color that I made a few, however many days ago in the 100 day project using drywall tape as a base. So this is very strong. 
Um, but I liked it because it's color coordinated. Um, okay, I think that's it for that. Number eight, I'm calling punch outs. So I have obviously a punch that looks like jigsaw pieces. Um, I wish this wasn't a diagonal corner here, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So I thought that was really kind of eye-catching and graphic on coloring book pages. Because, you know, it they're always stark black and white. So you can get away with something as bold as that and uh, really jazz it up. So, of course, this is the negative. We also, quite often, when we have little bits of paper and don't know what to do with them, we make punch-outs using different sized and shapes, for that matter, punches. But all these little, these little uh, yellow fowl, <laughs> and so ducks and baby chicks and this blue. This is just a, you know, the sort of stationery you can get sometimes in packages, like if you were printing, maybe making up uh, an invitation or posters or something. So I thought, okay, why don't I use that? So I basically doubled them up so that they would be stronger and look finished on both sides. So that is that. And of course, attempted to sort of have the colors coordinate with the paper itself. The next one is stickers. Now I've got millions of stickers and it makes me think I need to do a video about stickers. And some of the stickers are in sentiment form. So I just put a narrow little message along the side of this same paper that you've seen over and over again. Um, these, okay, this was in an earlier video about gift wrap or maybe making pockets. I don't know what the, what I called it exactly. And I just, I just used two of these. Again, this was thrifted. It looks like it's a hundred years old. They're called washi stickers. Boy, and they weren't very cheap. Um, so they're basically, you know, some of these different designs. So I thought, well, okay, dictionary page, that's black and white. Why don't I pick a black and white thing? Didn't really want to cover up the stitching, so I just put it beside it. And I reinforce, I um, obviously added glue just to make sure it's stuck. Um, so that's how that looks. Now on this one, what have I got here? Oh, you may remember, uh, what did I do with it? You may remember that in one of my thrift finds, I had a gazillion of these little spools and they're all just numbers. So this is all zeros. The one I used here was all fours. Um, I have no idea where they came from or what they, uh, you know, what the intended use was. But um, it kind of was cute here, so I used it. This, uh, I think, might be a Tim Holtz one, and I just used it on something that I had. That's probably avocado dye on just uh, the yellow copy of an invoice. And this is the final one and it's basically like a, at a garage sale or something I got some packages uh, of this paper tape oh. <laughs> other goodies in here apparently so all sorts of rolls of this kind of stuff it's not okay some of it you can see is two-sided uh, some of it is just plain white at the back. Then I must have, I don't know where I got this dispenser, but obviously I put a few rolls in here. And, and this stuff lends itself very well for, um, you know, doing the edge of pages. Now, one of the things that was in here is this. Now, I don't know if you can see... 
But this is what I ended up using here. I thought that that was pretty nice. It kind of mimics the, the ornate white design that's on this gift wrap already. Oh, I see that this little guy's stuck here. Probably. Oh, maybe I can. I might have to leave it. Or I'll just pick at it till I make a hole in the paper. Does that sound about right? So this little thing that stuck down where it didn't, wasn't supposed to is kind of these little bits here. So um, anyway, and I don't know who in her right mind measured this. Me. But like, why am I three quarters of an inch short there? No idea. But we're going to call it a design element as opposed to a boo-boo by the maker. Um, yeah, so, and of course, it, you know, it goes without saying that any of these ideas that were used on any of these signature pages can also, of course, be used to decorate cards or pockets or tags or, you know, you name it. But I have many, many, many signature pages folded and ready to go. I have many of these sorts of scraps and, and bits that, um, you know, again, need, need to go somewhere. I didn't use an actual roll of washi tape, but again, that's no different than, than this in a sense, because we don't trust the glue on this anyway. Um... So I think that this video will obviously have more appeal for beginners than people who have uh, been doing this a while. But I know that as a maker myself, I do appreciate reminders. And I also appreciate those videos where there are a whole bunch of ideas, related ideas, um, in one video. So rather than do a video on washi tape, or a video on fabric ruffles, or a third video on, uh, you know, scrapbooking paper scraps. I, it was like gift with purchase. I threw it all into one. I hope that that is appreciated by, by some of you. Um, maybe there will be others who don't like that approach. Um, but again, uh, we don't know unless we try. I uh, would appreciate you subscribing if you haven't already done so and liking and sharing and commenting because all of those things make such a difference to um, both, you know, the maker's um, attitude, confidence level, energy for to keep going. So it all matters, guys. And um, I will, uh, oh, I'll just say that the, the, the other example that I didn't make, and I do have it, I just didn't have the chance to look for it. Another thing that a person can do is just with rubber stamps, do some stamping or some stenciling down the edge of a page as well, uh, since we're talking about page edging. But I will stop there. I'll see you guys again tomorrow for day 77. Thanks. Bye.